Josephine Baker claimed she adopted so many kids from around the world because they were a rainbow tribe that proved peace was possible. But her own son revealed the much darker reason. Often called the Beyoncé of the 1920s, Josephine Baker lived a dozen lives in her time on Earth. The African-American singer made France her home, rising to stardom for her legendary dance moves, sultry voice and vaudeville humour. From her man-eater reputation to her time as a secret agent, it's high time to revisit the jaw-dropping life of Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker was born Frida Josephine MacDonald in St. Louis, Missouri on June 3rd, 1906. Entertaining was the Baker family business. Her legal father, Eddie Carson, was a vaudeville drummer who would play anywhere and everywhere around St. Louis to make ends meet. Some sources claim that her mother, Carrie, was a nimble, alluring dancer who gave up her showbiz dreams and became a laundress. Either way, legend has it that little baby Josephine made her stage debut in one of her parents' song and dance shows at just one year old. Though she didn't know it yet, she'd go on to become one of the most iconic performers of all time. Soon enough, Baker began dancing on street corners, but even though she loved the thrill of performing, the precarity of showbiz also followed. Baker stopped attending school before the sixth grade, and during an especially tough time, she even lived as a street child. At the height of the Harlem Renaissance, Baker was a successful Broadway performer. In time, she was billed as the highest paid chorus girl in vaudeville, but success didn't come overnight. When Baker first auditioned to join the all-black cast of Shuffle Along, the producers showed her the door for a cruel reason. She was too skinny, and too dark. But Josephine wasn't one to give up without a fight. While Josephine worked long days as a dresser, she spent her nights studying the shuffle along routines and learning them by heart. Soon enough, all her hard work paid off. When one of the original dancers left the show, Josephine saved the day and then some. When she performed, Baker would act silly and pretend not to know her moves. Later in the encore, she would wow the crowd by performing the steps perfectly. Josephine walked down the aisle for the first time at just 13 years old. She met her first groom, Willie Wells, while working as a waitress, but it wasn't meant to be. The young lover's marriage lasted less than a year. Barely a teenager at the time, Baker rebounded from her divorce by joining the Jones family band and promptly marrying again just two years later. At the age of 15, Josephine fell madly in love with another beau named Willie and decided to make things official yet again. Although she would split from Willie Baker just four years later, she used his last name for the rest of her professional life. For years, Baker tried to win over her mother, who disapproved of her pursuit of a showbiz career. She would always return home from tours with gifts and money for her mum and little sister, but no matter what Josephine did, she just couldn't buy Carrie's approval. Their disintegrating relationship was a major factor in Baker's move to Paris in 1925. Once she settled down in Paris, Baker rubbed elbows with the biggest names in art and caused an absolute frenzy. Almost overnight, she became the toast of the town. Pablo Picasso jumped at the chance to paint her beauty, while the French writer and artist Jean Cocteau wanted her to star in films. While some people saw exotic dancing as improper, Baker firmly disagreed. With her blend of silly expressions and provocative dance moves, her act was all about joy and freedom. Josephine loved France, particularly because it was nowhere near as discriminatory as the USA. When Baker and her fellow black performers boarded a train in Paris, they were shocked to see that they could sit wherever they pleased. France's more accepting society made a huge difference to Baker's career. She became the first African-American woman to take the lead role in a major movie. Baker obtained French citizenship from her third marriage to Jean Leon in 1937. 
While the marriage petered out pretty quickly, Baker kept her new nationality and sang its praises from the rooftops. One of Baker's most famous songs, J'ai deux amours, I have two loves, alluded to her double allegiances to her birth country, the USA, and her adopted home, France. But that's not what everyone thought the song meant. As time went on, people like Jean-Claude Baker, her biographer and adopted son, saw the subtext for what it was. Many critics believe that Baker was coyly singing about her sexuality. After all, it wasn't a very well-kept secret. She entertained several female lovers, many of whom were just as famous as Baker herself. Frida Kahlo is perhaps the most famous of her rumoured female lovers. The Mexican artist met Baker on a 1939 visit to Paris. During her time in Paris, Baker was a bona fide A-lister. From her stage shows to her starring roles on the silver screen, Josephine Baker was the name on everyone's lips. By 1927, she was said to be the wealthiest black woman in the world. But as Baker was ascending to the top of the A-list, Europe was falling into its darkest era. When Baker began her glitzy tour through Europe in 1928, she had no idea what awaited her. As she entered Vienna, Baker realised she was deeply unwelcome. All over the city, cruel posters called her a black devil and urged the public to avoid her shows. Once so much more accepting than the USA, Josephine's beloved Europe had turned. By the time Europe was embroiled in World War II, Josephine Baker had secretly become a spy for the French resistance. She would use her touring schedule as a cover to help her get into contact with politicians and other officials. She bravely used her mansion to hide weapons and provide safe haven for refugees and resistance fighters. When the Germans learned about Baker's safe house, they paid her a visit. Ever the charmer, Baker held them at bay and got out of the sticky situation, all without the Germans realising that a group of French resistance fighters were right under their noses. Baker's espionage tactics included far more covert operations. She started out by simply writing intel on her hands and arms, but her methods became more complex. The large piles of sheet music that accompanied her on tours were really secretly coded intel. Josephine Baker had a strong reputation for being on the right side of history. After raising funds for impoverished Parisians during World War II, she became the first American woman ever to be awarded the Croix de Guerre. And in 1946, she received the incredibly prestigious Medal of the Resistance. Josephine Baker was at Martin Luther King's side and was the only woman who spoke at the 1963 March on Washington. In the wake of King's untimely death five years later, his widow asked Baker to inherit her late husband's position as leader of the civil rights movement. Baker ultimately had to turn the position down for the safety of her children. Josephine was both a lover and a fighter, and she seemed to have endless energy on both fronts. Amid all her flirtations with women and marriages to men, Baker still found time to strike up a passionate affair with her manager, Giuseppe Pepito Abatino. While they never made it down the aisle, Baker and Abatino had a long, passionate affair. Under his management, Baker's career and public image took off in Europe. The duo even opened a popular nightclub, Shea Josephine. In her home country of America, however, people were less receptive to her act. Despite her haters, Europe's preeminent burlesque star returned to the USA in 1936 to become the first black woman to lead the famous Ziegfeld Follies. Baker's historic performance should have been a highlight in her career, but discriminatory reviewers felt differently. Sadly, that was nothing compared to her next tragedy. After Baker's brutal reception in the USA, she returned to France, only to find even worse news awaiting her. Her lover and manager, Abatino, had died. Wanting his beloved Josephine to enjoy her time in America, he didn't tell her that he was battling cancer. Devastated by the loss, Baker quickly took up several daredevil hobbies as ways to cope with her grief. She learned to drive a car, ride a horse, and even fly a plane. 
During Baker's time in Paris, she cultivated more than a few strange interests, but her most notorious was her collection of exotic and eccentric pets. A goat lived right above the dressing room of her nightclub, while Albert, Baker's beloved pet pig, ate scraps from her nightclub's kitchen. Sadly, Josephine's sweet gestures toward animals had dark roots. When Josephine was a young girl, she worked for some cruel people. One of her bosses, a white woman, burned Baker's hands when she made innocent mistakes like putting too much soap in the laundry. Because of this, Baker began to distrust people and instead spend her time with animals, especially injured ones. When Baker again returned to America in the 1950s, she remembered why she'd left. As though the discrimination in France wasn't bad enough, Baker faced an even harsher society back in the US. In a particularly gross example of the kind of cruel treatment she faced, a whopping 36 hotels refused to accommodate her. Grace Kelly and Josephine Baker were close friends. Together since 1951, the friendship began after Kelly defended Baker from racist servers at the famous Stork Club, who had refused to serve her. Kelly angrily stormed out of the club in a show of solidarity. Baker didn't find discrimination just at hotels and restaurants. It was right there in front of her at her own segregated cabaret shows. White men and women paid handsome sums to see Baker on stage, but only if black people were in a separate section. Baker famously began to refuse to perform in segregated venues in the US, even turning down $10,000 from the Stork Club, a Miami venue that asked her to make an exception. After her firm denial, the club eventually bent to her demands and hosted their first desegregated show. The entire city of Las Vegas also began to integrate its audiences at her request. Josephine's 1951 homecoming to Harlem was the biggest event of the decade. Her show was sold out and got rave reviews, reaching its apex with a parade in her honour that was attended by 100,000 people. Baker spent her 40s adopting 12 foster kids of many ethnicities and nationalities. She called her diverse family the Rainbow Tribe, and for years the multicultural kids lived in southern France alongside Baker's trademark exotic pets, including cheetahs and monkeys. On the surface, the Rainbow Tribe seemed like an idyllic brood, but after the children grew up, they told a different story. In her son Jean-Claude Baker's sceptical words, Baker didn't want a child. What she really wanted was a doll. However, a softer take on the Rainbow Tribe's quirky upbringing comes from Baker's Japanese son, Akio. He described Baker as a great artist and she was our mother. Mothers make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Despite all her success, she and her Rainbow Tribe fell on such hard financial times that in 1969, Baker had to give her precious home up to creditors. Baker ended up losing her beloved chateau, but even then, Princess Grace took care of her, arranging for her to have a villa in Monaco. In April 1975, Baker returned to the stage to celebrate her 50 years in the spotlight. Its opening night was an unbridled success. The theatre was filled to bursting with celebrities like Sophia Loren and Mick Jagger, and when Baker got on stage, the audience greeted her with a standing ovation. Just four days after this performance, Baker tragically suffered a cerebral hemorrhage in her hotel. When she died, the legendary performer was surrounded by rave reviews of her final iconic show. She was given a full Catholic funeral service, complete with a 21-gun salute that honoured her heroism during World War II. 20,000 of Baker's fans attended the funeral, however, when the time came for her to be buried, she didn't stay in her beloved Paris. Instead, she was interred nearby in Grace Kelly's adopted home of Monaco. Josephine Baker's legacy lives on to this day. Performers like Beyonce and Diana Ross have paid homage to her, but the biggest way that Baker lives on is through her pursuit of justice. You are a united people, at last, because without unity, there cannot be any victory. And after so many long years of struggle, 
fighting here and elsewhere for your rights, our rights, the rights of humanity. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos.